Hi friends, it's Monica and today I'm going to be talking about some romance books that I love. To start this video off, I've only really started reading like strictly adult romance books since the beginning of this year and I've been really having fun with them and I want to share some of those books with you. I have previously talked about two of these books in um, a past video before but I want to go more in depth in this video. Also, I want to preface that I am still predominantly a fantasy reader. I'm going into this video with the thought of recommending romance books to fantasy readers who want to try out romance. I only have a short list of four romance books that I want to share. So let's start off with the Happy Ever After playlist by Abby Jimenez. So this one I rated 5 out of 5 stars and I absolutely love the buildup of this couple and their eventual meeting in person. In this book, we're following Sloane, whose fiancé has sadly passed away two years ago, and she's having trouble to getting back to her normal life. On the anniversary of Brennan's death, Sloane is driving to his grave, and she nearly misses hitting a dog. But then this dog, Tucker, also jumps into her car and then Sloane takes it upon herself to take care of this dog. After seeing that this dog might be potentially a sign from her fiancé to help her stop being so antisocial, Sloane does try to text the owner of the dog, but the texts go unanswered for weeks and she's already feeling a lot better with her new companion. But Sloane finds out that Tucker the dog belongs to Jason, who's an up-and-coming musician and who's currently on tour in Australia and he wants his dog back. The beginning of their relationship begins throughout text messages and then that turns into phone calls so they're long distance at first but there is a bond and connection that's growing. When these two finally meet in person, the sparks fly and this part of their romance was really sweet and nice to read about. I did read this book on audiobook and it really helped to bring the characters to life and you could feel their emotions more I did love how there was different layers to their overall relationship since that makes it more realistic and the, the first layer is Sloane who is healing from her emotional wounds from grieving her fiance and we see her learning to come back to her normal self first through the dog Tucker and then with Jason and then there's another layer in their relationship or which I would call a third wheel in the relationship is the music industry and with that aspect of the story, it brought a lot of drama and tension to the book which is kind of nice to read about because Jason is an up-and-coming and rising musician he's about to go on a year tour and Sloane has to make the decision if she is going to give up on her own career of being an artist and building up her own name at, in her own industry if she will give all of that up to join Jason on tour to support his dream career. There are some instances of insta-love between Sloane and Jason, but I think it worked out in this book because there is the connection first over uh, long distance, and then you kind of feel their chemistry come alive when they finally meet in person. And I enjoyed how they got to learn about each other and they quickly fell in love. Usually I wouldn't go for insta-love stories, but it did work in this situation. In the last third of this book, there are a lot of tense scenes regarding the music industry and how there might be maybe some jealous ex-girlfriends and over-obsessed fans of Jason that are really curious about Jason and his personal life and for Sloane that's really daunting for her. There were scenes that made me tear up. In the last couple of scenes there was like an emotional build up towards it and it was really great and nice to see like the magical moment coming together in the end. So this one was really really good and I really highly recommend it. So this next book I am going to recommend, I did talk about it in my February wrap up. It's Reminders of Him by Colin Hoover and I did rate this one a 4.25 out of 5 stars. This one was a sweet romance contemporary book. It did make me tear up as well since all the books on this list did make me tear up or have an emotional reaction while reading it and although this one was really emotionally impactful, it wasn't as emotionally impactful as other Colleen Hoover books I've read before, but I still appreciate the story of Kenna, Scotty, and Ledger. Reminders of him explores the struggles of a young mother who has made a terrible mistake and is now trying to rectify that mistake. So our main character, Kenna, who has been in prison for the past five years, for making a horrible mistake in her youth 
and now she wants to reconnect with her daughter that she has had in prison but she never got to bond with at all and now she's back in town she runs into ledger who may help kenna but their relationship is so complex and there's so many different layers to the relationship that kept me reading to find out what exactly happened between these two i did love the strong emotional connection that we have with these two and you feel their chemistry coming off the page. This book does a really good job at exploring if life gives you a bad hand and how sometimes in life you don't have control over certain events and I really like how this book touched upon that theme. So this exploration in Reminders of Him is with Kenna and her emotional healing and trying to make up for her terrible mistake that she did. She did do the time away from her daughter in jail. Reading through her struggles was absolutely heartbreaking, especially when she was trying to see her daughter and reconnect with her daughter. Be prepared to cry a little bit <laughs> or a lot when those particular scenes come up and you do feel how Kenna tries to forgive herself and do what's best for her child but she's feeling a lot of emotions when she's out of prison and regarding the romance they have great chemistry there's a lot of tension between them and i liked reading about their dynamics since the book does read from Kenna and Ledger's POVs. Ledger himself was Scotty's best friend and I think that might give a hint about what's happened in the past and you do find out about what happened in like the first one two chapters so this isn't a spoiler per se so just that past connection between Kenna and Ledger does add that first layer of complexity to their relationship but when it does become revealed who Kenna is and Ledger was well, kind of questionable in some of his actions but i understand why he took the actions he did besides their great intensity there is added tension from scotty's parents and it makes you feel a lot of complex emotions my only issue with this book was that there was the satisfying build-up between kenna and ledger but then the ending seemed quite rushed i did want to see more of a resolution to the storylines instead of just like okay here's the epilogue but I was satisfied at how everything turned out. So that little con didn't really take away from the huge emotional impacts that this book had on me. And it was way better than I had expected going into this one. So after my initial review in my favorite wrap up and like doing this video now, I'm thinking like uh, Colleen Hoover does such a great job in her writing and conveying all the emotional hardships that our characters go through and she's really skilled at that and i really need to read more of colin hoover's books if you do want a hard-hitting emotional roller coaster in a romance book i think you should pick up this one my next romance recommendation is the love hypothesis by ali hazelwood and i also rated this one a 4.25 out of 5 stars so this book was so so hyped up but it didn't disappoint in that regard we follow olive who is a phd candidate and she's currently working on her cancer research in a lab olive finds herself in a fake dating situation with a young hotshot professor adam carlson to convince her best friend Anne that she is actually dating someone surprisingly adam is quite agreeable to continue the shroud of being Olive's fake boyfriend and he's quite supportive of her at an academic conference even though he acts like an arrogant prick to everyone else. Even if you're not from the STEM field which is this author's background, it's pretty accessible to everyone to understand the science side of this book and it was really nice to read about this type of setting since I do have a degree in biology myself. So the build-up of their romance is what kept me reading for this romance book and it did help that they had great chemistry and really good banter between the two of them. Also with the trope of fake dating, it was really fun to see like the sneaking around or fake sneaking around and also trying to keep up the act in front of their colleagues and that did lead to some funny or awkward situations between Adam and Olive. However, both of our main characters, they do have their own personal issues. Olive does lack some confidence in herself and her work when she is needed to present some of her findings in her research but she really is a brilliant scientist. Adam himself is aloof and distant to others and he could use some help to recognize that you don't need to be delivering criticism in such a way that will have people leaving your conversation or discussion in tears. They both do learn some of these issues that they have and acknowledge them and uh, I think they will continue to work on them even beyond the, the end of the book. I do like to see character growth in a book and I'll give this one a few bonus points because it is a romance book. Okay, my only issue with this book was 
a part of Olive's personality of her being obviously the quirky, weird girl who doesn't really think that dating is possible for her. And she does overcome that by the end of the book. There's also an aspect of sexual assault covered in this book and it is handled well, but be aware of that before going into this one. At the end of the day, our couple overcomes obstacles and their relationship is one that's really entertaining to read about. And my last book pick of this video is It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. And yes, this one did make me tear up as well. And I did rate this one a 5 out of 5 stars. So It Ends With Us is an emotionally intense book. And with all the books in this video, they all have some emotional impact on you. But this one did previously bring me out of a bad reading slump that I had. I won't spoil too much of what the overarching theme and issue that's being dealt in this one. And going into this book myself, I didn't know what to expect, but the main theme was really handled with care and respect. So be aware that you might be possibly triggered if you do pick up this one. I don't want to say more because the discovery of leading up to what's happening in this book is really impactful. So if you do need to, just search up what the main topic is in this book. Although the issues that are discussed in this book are typically regarded as sad, but it also shows the strength that can come out of that situation. So we are following Lily Bloom who is living out her life in Boston and she has just started her own business. Until one night on a rooftop, she has a chance encounter with a brilliant neuroscientist, Ryle Kincaid. And we continue on from there following Lily as she navigates her challenges and her past. Lily is a character of strength and she displays both quiet and loud types of strength. And she shows in this book how you can experience and endure so much, but she comes out on the other side a lot stronger. And Kyle is the sort of man that is really charming. He's assertive, intelligent, and you can't help but fall for him. And reading how their relationship and dynamics play out on the page, it will keep you really addicted. There's also a third person and who plays a vital role, Atlas, and he's someone from Lily's past, but he's really important. <laughs> One thing that I loved the most about this book was the theme that cycles can be broken and you don't need to endure it when you can be the one to take a step and make that change that you need. And that's pretty much what I'm going to say about this book. I really highly recommend that you pick up this one if you do want to laugh, cry, and also love Lily as a strong character and woman. I understand why so many people rave about this book and I cannot wait to read the second book that releases this year and I'm really looking forward to doing a reread of this one as well. So those were all the romance books that I personally recommend as a fantasy reader. Thank you so much for watching. Give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and don't forget to ring the notification bell to not miss any future uploads. I'll see you all soon.